What's up, man? So uh, I met Jerry down at the Bikers and Brews um, ride. And, uh, you know, we kind of, I think, had an automatic connection because he had a Pan America and I had my sports dress. And we're both like, hey, Revolution Max Engine. What got you into riding? W where did you start? You know, I'm 50 years old, so it, it was a long time ago. You know, I wasn't one of these people that started off with a dirt bike in the woods or some fun like that. I think I was like 20 and car insurance just got too expensive. And I started looking around and uh, my first bike, I, you know, it was brand new in the showroom and $3,000, I could walk out with it. So um, that's kind of how I started. I was working with a guy uh, who worked at that dealership. So he kind of told me some of the ins and outs, how things worked and what to look out for. Um, so I bought the bike and this is crazy. I was working for a, well, I was working for a bank and one of my coworkers uh, worked for this company called Events Unlimited. And they actually um, did cycle bike, well, Lance Armstrong, you know, like cycle races around the country. Oh, yeah. And they used moto marshals. So as soon as he found out I was, you know, I was a motorcycle rider, he jumped on and said, hey, you got to, you know, sign up for this with me. And um, he was in charge of like all the volunteers and stuff like that. So I ended up working right. for them for a couple of years. Uh, it was a part-time gig whenever there were races uh, that, I mean, we got to go all over. Uh, we would do like a, a week tour every year in West Virginia. And it was like a rolling roadblock kind of thing to where the state police gave us stickers to put on our bikes, like Marshall and all these stuff. It was kind of cool. And uh, we were closing roads as the cyclists would go through. Uh, and, you know, those groups, especially in West Virginia, those mountains kind of sp would spread people apart. So, you know, we're telling people they can't drive on their road. You know, I've been driving on this road for 100 years. You can't tell me. <laughs> right, uh, right. You but, don't own the road. <laughs> yeah, so but being a younger rider, uh, riding with people with so much experience, it really did kind of work out for me. Uh I learned kind of quick to stay within your limits. Don't try to keep up with anybody you're not supposed to. Uh, so you're, you're getting ready to buy a new bike. And you, you told me you ordered your Pan America. Um, what else did you look at? And, and why did you choose the Pan America? I was looking for something bigger. Um, I didn't have a bike for a couple of years. When I got jumped back into, into it, I... Uh, decided whatever bike I got, I was going to keep it for five years, no matter what. I wasn't going to jump into anything bigger. I was just going to make sure I was going to stick with it because it's an expensive hobby. <laughs> so uh, I, I did my five years on that, my Honda. And uh, I was like, well, it's time for something bigger. I wanted something to lug myself around. And the uh, wife, if I can get her out on there, maybe do some ice cream runs or something. Right. Um, uh, so I was looking for something bigger. I did start off kind of looking at the baggers, but, you know, coming from a world of like imports, even Triumphs and my Ducatis and all that, like I started looking into the Harleys and, you know, they start talking about like three whole oil changes. And I was like, what, you have a transmission too? Like, <laughs> so it was a little intimidating. And then once the Pan America came out, that orange, <laughs> I saw that orange and I was like, you know, that's really nice. Uh, I was kind of looking at some of the bigger, Yamaha's like the FJ, I think it's a 1300. Uh, I was looking at the gold wing, that was a little too big. Uh, even the baggers to me, um, they're he I mean, when you ride it, they're they're okay, but when you're just moving them around, they're kind of heavy. Uh, so I was going leaning back towards the adventure bikes, um, uh, the Triumph Tigers, the 900s, the Africa Twin is a little straight off road. I really didn't want that, I wanted something I could tour on. Uh, Triumph Tigers. They were supposed to come out with a 1200. Um, about the same time I was looking, I was I, the Pan America was checking all the boxes, uh, pretty much spec for spec on par with what the Tiger was. Um, I when that blue came out, I I was like, wow, that that's what I want. And met up with Roy and uh, Upstate Upstate Rider. Um, 
I, I put my, I mounted my Go, my Insta360 with the 4K mod right on the front, just like I used to with my GoPro. I put a helmet in, I got the adapter and I, I plugged it in. And so I did a whole vlog on fanny packs because I, it's like kind of like I was talking about it and uh, I probably did like a 30 minute like rant on it. And uh, I got to Stewart's and met up with Roy and everything. I looked, my mic wasn't plugged in all the way. It was like in, it just needed a little bit more of a snap. And I was like, oh man. So, but it's funny because I was talking about that and I was like, all right, so our fanny packs cool, you know, because yeah, because when I was in high school, like they had fanny packs out and a lot of people were wearing them with the zebra pants and the, and the, you know, and the fanny pack and like you were the, and you had your Walkman in there and, you know, your calculator watch and, and you were the shit, you know? Um, but so I was like saying, are they cool? Because, you know, are they cool for guys to wear? Cause I've seen, I saw a couple people up in America wearing fanny packs and I was like, dude, really? You know, but, and some people love them. So, so what do you think? Are fanny packs cool? No, no, I, that that's another thing that just needs to go away. Yeah.